attention pour des comptes finales. 10, 9, 8. You are looking at Ariane 6, Europe's newest launcher and the European Space Agency's promise for independent and more affordable access to space. This inaugural launch marks a new era of possibilities for the next generation of space explorers. In the backdrop of this historic moment, a small group of young European professionals who had no prior experience in building spacebound technology embarked on the challenge of designing and manufacturing one of a dozen satellites that will fly into space with Ariane 6. This is the story of their satellite, the young professional satellite, YPSAT. I think it was almost a joke. All right, let's, let's try to do something. Something very basic, very simple, maybe some postcard in the box or very simple. And we send a message to a young ESA, which is a, a group which gather all the young professional ESA. We we're proposing to do something on the inaugural flight of Orion 6. We had 10 ideas, some crazy ideas, like uh, deploy a satellite with its own propulsion or inflate a balloon in the form of uh, an astronaut or I mean, some crazy ideas. I submitted the idea to send some cameras in space. ESA wants to communicate more on their projects and uh, by proposing a project that could highlight this next heavy uh, European launcher, it was something interesting. And then uh, one day I was calling LinkedIn and then I see uh, ESA selects uh, payloads for the N6 maiden flight and I say okay let's click on it. And then I scroll down and then I see this uh, uh, ballast view with all the, the payloads and then I see on the table uh, YPSAT, Eye to Sky, that was the name at the time, uh, ESA payload and I'm saying what? That's our proposal. <laughs> and from there, uh, of course, you have the excitement of having uh, something selected. Then the second reaction was like, okay, now we are in trouble <laughs> because we, uh, we need to make it work. The main thing that we had identified at the time was that we need to get support. And we start working on that. We started to interview some, uh, some experts from, uh, from Aztec. So it's all right, it's not impossible, guys. <laughs> considering the timeline, considering the budget, no budget, <laughs> uh, you will not do it. And then we had a meeting, uh, thanks to Julien, uh, with the director of tech. At that time it was uh, Torben Eriksson. They described to me a, a, a project which intended to develop a payload to fly on the maiden flight of IN6. And I was very impressed by the idea I was impressed by the motivation that I saw, that I heard, and the initiative that was taken by, by, by this group of young engineers. Obviously, I had in, in the back of my head that it's very um, ambitious, but they did not seem to be scared about the challenge, and neither was I. So I certainly reached out and confirmed my support to the YPSAT project for them to go ahead and get the support from, from, from tech. When we finished the meetings, I also told them that, uh, please do not screw up. <laughs> <laughs> then it went extremely fast, because at the time we had nine months to develop the full mission, so we had no time to lose. That's where we decided to do not have attitude control. We decided to stay attached to the launcher, because build designing a propulsion system is extremely technical and extremely hard. I honestly thought that they would never make it. I was extremely skeptical about the ability of such a small team and with so little resources available. But then the team looked much stronger with a much wider range of skills. Also the timeline with the RNCs uh, had changed by then, meaning that it made more sense. So we started designing. It was tight, but in my opinion it was doable tight. <laughs> with confirmed support from ESA, the Young Professionals Initiative gained momentum. The team expanded and shifted its focus towards defining the mission's objectives. 
They needed to identify the main challenges they would have to overcome to implement their vision. The main mission of the YP set is to record the main milestones of the Ariane 6 maiden flight. The first is the fairing separation, so when the fairing of the rocket opens, uh, this we want to record in a 10 second video. And then there is also the deployment of the other CubeSats. Uh, on board of Ariane 6 there are in total 10 CubeSats. And then as a last part, we want to record uh, 5 pictures of the Earth whilst in orbit and then send all of this uh, video and imagery data to Earth to all our collaborating ground stations. So our mission is going to last three hours only. We will have two complete orbits with the upper stage of uh, Ariane 6 and we have three different payloads inside our platform. So we have, for example, a magnetic sensor, we have an amateur uh, radio antenna and we have two cameras on top of it. So that's our imaging system and they shall record the fairing separation. And we have board in YPSET, the so-called wake-up system. And this wake-up system um, contains several accelerometers and pressure sensors. Normally, payloads, they are persuaded during the launch and will only activate it when they are then released to space. And our ones is different. It will wake up um, already during the launch, will capture data during the launch. And that creates a lot of problem and a lot of constraints for us. Because Aaron 6 was designed to have everything turned off while it's launching. So we realized that we needed a circuit board that was super safe, super reliable, while still performing some critical function that if it doesn't work, we don't take pictures at all. But there's also another uncertainty, for example, is that YPSET is rotating. Because the, the ballast is rotating, uh, we call that a barbecue roll. And <laughs> the reason for that is because it, uh, yeah, the sun evenly distributes the, the thermal uh, energy in that way. But that actually makes it more difficult for us because it means that even if a ground station can see Ariane 6, the launcher, and can track it, it doesn't mean we're actually pointing with our antenna towards that ground station. So we could be uh, kind of like shooting our data up in the sky, um, but not actually pointing at Earth. Well, if we get picture signals, like, I would be extremely happy. But as always, it's uh, not certain. Um, and actually, it's already now a great success because figuring out what is going wrong and uh, troubleshooting and back and forth and talking to people, uh, running around fetching components, getting it fixed, talking to the experts, that is already the success of the mission, I would say. Uh, for me, this uh, enthusiasm, this energy, this uh, positive spirit to get some, something done, get the hands on, uh, on onto uh, some hardware, this is really fascinating. And I, I can only say thank you, YP. This is really fantastic to see. Large flagship missions require significant investment of time and resources, which historically limited such opportunities for younger, less experienced professionals. The trust that ESA places in these young professionals is not just an act of goodwill. It underscores the vital need for fresh ideas in Europe's space sector. A team of young European engineers coming together, building on their own with a lot of responsibility and spirit and uh, um, imagination. I think that fits pretty much in the whole scheme of, of ESA. It's a scaled um, model of what we're doing in our large, fantastic missions. It has all the ingredients of a real project. It has project management, it has team lead, it has engineering, verification, the testing, product assurance and safety, failures, crisis situations, a tight schedule. You learn a lot about how um, a project works, how a project uh, management works, but not only the technical area, but it's also the, the, the human side coming together in an international team, working together across sites, it, it, and, and seeing how difficult this is sometimes, but also seeing how rewarding this can be. I think that's just an incredible experience. 
And it was an opportunity also to get these young engineers to not only interact with the engineering disciplines, but also to get them engaged with the labs that we have within tech. And maybe through their initiative, that could stimulate a little bit of interest within the tech community and within the labs for doing something different from flagship uh, missions. If we're not bringing in the young people to ESA, uh, um, we will run out of ideas, we will run out of, out of inspiration, we will not be able to adopt new technologies, uh, um, and, and therefore it's very obvious the young people are, are, are the future. I think this uh, energy that you can bring in, uh, but also the the can-do spirit uh, that you say, I can do it, I want to do it, and I don't need to be in the agency for 20, 30 or 40 years in order to, to really uh, be working on a satellite. I think this can-do spirit is uh, fantastic and this is what I really appreciate. We have so many young people that are motivated to do things. Why not doing something together? And YPSAT is the only project at ESA that makes possible the contribution of several YGTs on the same projects. I feel like my opinions and my, my contribution counts more than uh, for a bigger mission when there's a lot of stakeholders involved. For IPSAT, we are a small team, so everything that I do counts. The privilege of getting to send something into space uh, is, is quite important for me. It's something that I um, it, it's what I, I wanted to do when, when I started my degree. Yeah, I think YPSET in a way is, is a very inspirational project for a younger audience that sees all these young people working on an actual space mission and then maybe thinking like, oh, I could do that as well if they can do it. Being able to join such a project is like just getting closer to the things I was seeing on the TV when I was young. And finally, I'm just in the middle of it now. It's definitely what I want to do, to just explore space and find answers on what we don't know yet. We followed the young professionals at ESA as they embarked on their journey of building the YP SAT. But their adventure is just beginning. What powers the satellite? Who activates the cameras at the crucial moment? And how is the data transmitted back to Earth? In the next episode, the YPSAT team will come together to tackle these technical challenges with creativity and determination, overcoming obstacles they didn't even know existed yet.